Hi everyone! This time, I've decided to diverge a bit from my usual topics of game programming and visual effects. Instead of Godot, I'll open Blender and create an asteroid. Asteroids are my favorite objects in space shooters, and because I'm currently working on one, I'm paying special attention to them. This video is intended for beginners, so I will try to explain as many details as possible. If I missed any, please write to me in the comments. Let's get started. This is not the first time I'm working with modeling in Blender and then importing the finished object into Godot Engine. I touched on this topic in my first tutorial on creating a space shooter and I also released a video dedicated to this export-import process six months ago. However, enough time has passed since then to improve on what I didn't know before. Enough talk, let's open Blender. Please note that I am using the latest version of Blender, which is 4.1.1 at the time of recording this video. Upon launching, the standard scene with a cube, light and camera will appear, which I will delete. But before doing that, I will activate screencast keys, a very useful add-on that displays the keys or mouse buttons I am currently using. And it should be right here, let's click and press something. Yeah, it seems to be working. Great. So now I will press A to select everything in the scene and then X to delete. If you are not used to working in Blender, you might encounter a situation where you press a key and nothing happens. This is because Blender behaves based on where the mouse cursor is pointing. So if I, for example, aim it at this panel uh, in the bottom right, pressing A does nothing or does something but not what we want it to. So make sure you move your mouse cursor in the main editor window. Now pressing A selects everything, pressing X and confirming deletes everything. And I press N to hide this side panel. Great. Now we have an empty scene into which we'll insert an asteroid. I won't model it manually vertex by vertex, as that would take unnecessary long. Fortunately, there is another great add-on that is built into Blender, so there is no need to download and install anything extra. We just need to open Edit, Preferences, uh, find the add-ons panel right here and type Extra Objects. And here it is. It seems it's already activated, so I don't need to do anything, but if you find that the checkbox is not set, just click it and the add-on would be activated. Very well. And it will add more objects to the standard selection. Uh, let's make sure that our workspace is set to layout right here, and the mode is set to object mode. Okay, and now let's finally generate the asteroid. I'll press Shift A for to add, mesh, and select a rock generator. And something is already here. Very well. As we can see, Blender has generated a new rock and also opened a new menu called Add Rocks right here at the left corner. If it's not expanded, just click on this label to expand it. This menu is essential for creating our asteroid, so be careful not to perform other actions until we are finished with it. Sometimes we might accidentally click outside the menu and it disappears. Fortunately, there's a way to bring it back, but only if we do it immediately. In the edit section, find... Uh, where is it? Uh, adjust last operation and the menu will reappear. And the same can be achieved by pressing F. Let's bring it back again. And now, for example, let's play with the deformation. Yeah, this is definitely more asteroid-like. Uh, please note that with every change of a parameter, the asteroid is completely regenerated. This is because we have the checkbox Use a random seat right here checked. If we turn it off, if we turn it off, further parameters 
changes, a further parameter changes will be applied to the current model that we can select manually by changing the seed value, which is over there. So let's try something else. Okay. Yeah, this might look like an asteroid. Why not? Let's just change some kind of deformation maybe or roughness. Yeah, this is more rough. I think that we can be satisfied with that. Okay, let's say we are happy with this asteroid. However, right now we only have a model without any textures or other material properties. But before we add the material, we need to apply the modifiers that the rock generator automatically added to the model, which shape it into what we can see right here. So I'll open the modifiers panel, this wrench icon, and we can see that there are several modifiers listed, mostly uh, subsurf uh, displays and other things that deformate the original, original primitive, uh, primitive shape. So for each of them, I will use the apply function, which is right here hidden in this menu, or just pressing Ctrl A as a shortcut. And everything is applied right now. Uh, by the way, now it's probably a good idea to save the scene, so we make sure we won't lose it. Ctrl S, and where should I put it? Right here, for instance, and call it asteroid dot blend and save. So how can we create a material? If we don't need our models to have intricate handcrafted textures, we can easily use freely available materials of which there is a vast variety available today. I found this nice, nice asteroid material on the website texturecan.com and downloaded its 1K maps, which are completely sufficient for our purposes. When I unpack the zip file, we can find several textures there. AO, uh, where is it? Here, AO stands for ambient occlusion. Color is the standard texture color, sometimes referred to as albedo or diffuse. Height is the height map. Roughness indicates parts of the texture based on how they reflect light. And normal belongs to the normal map which allows us to simulate various surface irregularities. It comes in two versions, DirectX and OpenGL. For Blender, we will use the OpenGL version. OK, that's quite a lot of files to manually assemble into a final material. We'll use another Blender add-on called Node Wrangler for this. If you never used it before, you'll probably need to activate it in Preferences. OK, let's check it in Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and it was Node Wrangler, Rang. Yeah, here it is. It's already set, so there is nothing I need to do right now. Let's add a material, which is done in the bottom uh, right panel under the Material section. I think it's already selected. Very well, let's click New, wait a couple of seconds, and the new material has been created. Make sure that it is a principled BSDF type. I will switch to the shading screen where we have our uh, asteroid preview and the basis of the graph which we'll use to calculate the material for our asteroid. Over there I'll select principles BDF uh, node and press Ctrl Shift T. OK, and let's find the folder where we downloaded the material. I think it was in downloads and name was ground something. There it is. OK, let's select all the textures we unpacked from the zip archive. As I said, we will need the not DirectX, but OpenGL normal map. So this one and then the rest. I'm holding Ctrl key and selecting the other files and pressing uh, principled texture something, this button. And there, there we go. The whole, let me just expand it. The whole graph has been created automatically. Perfect. And everything is connected to correct sockets. Very well. If we want to see uh, the asteroid with its material, we should switch here to the material preview. And it seems like I already done it before. So here we can see it and rotate it and see that it is not 
completely perfect yet, but we'll address that very quickly. Okay, so we have the model with the material, but uh, when we scale it up a bit, we can see that the material looks a bit strange. Yeah, definitely. In places, the stone doesn't have the best texture, and sometimes even some kind of seams were visible, and so on. This is because Blender has created a graph that textures should be mapped using the UV coordinates. It is right here in the mapping section, UV to vector to mapping. But we didn't define any UV uh, maps yet. We need to address this somehow. Basically, we have two options. Either switch to UV editing right here and create a UV map for this entire model, or we can use something else for texture mapping of the model. The first option, UV editing, is a bit cumbersome in this case because we have an object with uh, of an irregular shape and with a large number of vertices and faces, making it difficult to define proper unwrapping. Let's try something simpler. In the graph, under the mapping section, instead of UV, let's connect object to the vector. Uh, yeah, this. Okay, something definitely changed. Let's take a look. So now we need to change the projection settings because as we can see here in the textures section, the projection, it is right here, is set to flat. But our asteroids is definitely not a flat object, so we would be better off with the box projection. And let's do it for all these uh, all these nodes. So ambient occlusion. Then here we have base color from flat to box, and I will do it for the rest as well. Here I have a roughness from flat to box. Then and displacement. I think that was named the height map before flat to box, and finally the normal map from flat to box. Okay, this is definitely a lot better. And it seems that there are still some small artifacts which we can try to address by changing the blend value. Let's get back to the top. And right here we have blend, which is currently set to zero. If I change it to one, it should help with further masking various inaccuracies in the texture and other maps. And I'll do it for the other uh, other notes as well. Blend for everything to one. Uh, where is it? Uh, here. And uh, uh, sorry. Normal map. Blend to one. Let's zoom out. Okay. I would say this is quite a nice result. When I switch back to <coughs> when I switch back to layout. We can see that the material is not visible here. We need to switch to material preview preview here as well. Let's do it. And the full asteroid is right here and it's nicely illuminated. We can see the inaccuracies defined by the normal map and the roughness map and other maps. Great. Don't forget to save the final model into a file. Control S. So, that concludes the part of the tutorial concerning modeling in Blender. In the next part, I will show how to export such an asteroid or any other model and then import it into Godot Engine, which is not a completely straightforward process. For now, take care and see you next time.